Hey guys, what is up? John here from fly8mikealpha.com and today we are talking about prop balancing. So what exactly is propeller balancing and what is it going to do for you? Well, most importantly, it's going to alleviate some serious vibration problems on the airframe. Not necessarily that the whole airplane's shaking and it, it's kind of a rough ride, but it's going to fix any sort of harmonic vibrations or, or really bad vibrations in the airframe that you may not even detect, but will cause big problems for you. Things like, well, this really loose trim tab that's just vibrated and, and come loose and the hinge has been blown out from the vibrations or these flying wires that are shaking back and forth. There's in fact so much vibration in the back of the tail of this aircraft that actually caused this AN3 bolt to fracture in flight. Uh, kind of bad, kind of scary. So those are the things that propeller balancing are going to address aside from just the generic, yeah, big vibrations you do feel in the airplane. Like you can see here in one of our older videos with this GoPro just kind of bouncing all around. Yeah, that Cherokee did have some vibration issues. So it's not just the vibrations you feel, it's also the ones you don't feel, but most importantly, it's really going to help with cracks, longevity, minimizing any sort of wear and tear on the airframe and engine to overall improve airframe life and engine life. Obviously, engines, airframes are expensive, repairs on those things are expensive. So if you can take your TBO from 1800 to 2000 or 2000 to 2200 or whatever it is, it's money well spent to spend three to $500 getting your propeller balanced. Let's talk about how we actually do this. Well, for starters, your propeller should be fairly well balanced when it comes from the factory. Of course, very few of us have factory new propellers on our airplane. So if it has not been statically balanced in a while, meaning simply removed from the aircraft and then put on a machine to balance just the propeller itself, then that's something to go ahead and consider. That's typically something done during propeller overhaul. As far as using the DynaVibe Classic to go ahead and dynamically balance the propeller, and what we're doing here is not just balancing the propeller, we're balancing the whole engine and the whole system as it works together, right? So we're actually gonna run the engine, measure the vibration, and then add weight to the spinner or to the flywheel to the propeller somewhere to counteract any sort of out of balance condition, whether it be on the propeller, the crankshaft and the engine, whatever it is, it's going to balance the whole system together, which is really nice compared to just a static balance on the prop. Remember, static balance is your first step to make sure the propeller is actually at least close to being balanced. It's not crazy out of balance. And then balancing the whole system together, the engine and the propeller together at the RPMs that we actually fly because vibrations are not all created equally. And in the case of the Bearhawk that I was flying, vibrations were not too bad at 2000 RPM. They weren't too bad at 2500 RPM, but right in the range that you wanted to fly in that 2200 to 2400 range, uh, at certain airspeeds, it could be really nasty as the engine, the propeller, and the airspeed of the aircraft all work together to create that flutter, those dynamic vibrations. To set up the prop balancer, we're going to put the obstacle tack sensor right here to actually see some tape on the back of the propeller. Go ahead and place a piece of tape there. The manual tells you exactly how big that piece of tape is supposed to be in the DynaVibe balancer. Then we're going to mount our vibration sensor. It can go here, 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 whatever. Just make sure it's straight up and down. Best if it's going to be near the center of the case and attached very firmly. We'll run all those wires back to the side, either to someone using the control outside the aircraft, or in this case, we're gonna run them right inside the airplane. It is nice to do this with two people, so one person can focus on operating the aircraft, holding the brakes, all that, while the other person can keep an eye on the actual equipment, uh, and then keep an eye for anybody walking around the outside of the airplane just for safety's sake. Then we go ahead and fire up the airplane, turn on the classic balancer. You can see if the airplane is not running, it's gonna say no tack. As soon as the propeller starts turning, you'll get that tack signal. And then you're going to get these IPS readings and an at a certain degree range, all right? So IPS is essentially how out of balance the propeller really is. The smaller the number, the better. We're gonna go ahead and let the airplane warm up, get the cylinder temps above 300 preferably before we start giving it a whole lot of power and getting it up to cruise RPM. When doing this with a constant speed propeller, I'll typically set the manifold pressure and cruise RPM that I use in flight, just to try to make things as realistic as possible. For a fixed pitch propeller, I simply get the RPM to my desired cruise RPM and then balance for that. In the case of our 172 here, we went ahead and gave it full throttle. It's a pretty cold day, very low density altitude, like negative 2000 feet. And so the most static RPM we could really get out of the thing, just over 2200 RPM. We let it stabilize there for a little bit, tap this average button, wait for it, and then it will go ahead and average for us. The average IPS and the average degree where it's out of balance, we'll go ahead and let the engine cool down. So running at about a thousand RPM or less for a minute or two there cooling the cylinders down, shutting down the engine, and then getting out and looking at the propeller head on, all right? So in this case, we had a reading 
of 1.07 ips at 276 degrees. All right. Now, for starters, that's a huge number. Okay. We should be seeing something more in like the 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 range. Anything over one's pretty, pretty on the line of like, hey, this propeller needs to be pulled off and statically balanced. All right. Every time the A&P was grinding on this thing at annual, taking some chips out of it, the likelihood that they evenly balanced the left blade where the chip was and the right blade and took a little bit of material off that and kept it all within balance, kind of slim that that's actually done perfectly every time. So the propeller is fairly out of balance, but we're going to see what we can do to try to improve this at least, make it better than it is, even if we can't get it to a perfect scenario. A good IPS number is going to be something below 0.1. Now where we put that optical tack and where we put the tape on the prop is pretty important. That's going to be zero degrees or 360 top dead center. And we are heavy at the 276 degree station. So coming around to 276 degrees, we're heavy there. So we need to add weight to the reciprocal of that. So it's going to be 096, so 96 degrees or, well, wherever you're closest to that. Now, for this initial process, we're just going to add weight to the spinner, and then we can put it in a more permanent place later on. The math here to figure out how much weight we need to add, well, this is a pretty big number. We're going to take our engine horsepower, divide that by 10, add 30 to it. So in this case, we get 44.5, and then we're going to multiply that by our IPS number, 1.07. So we're looking at 40 some, almost 50 grams of weight here that we need to add to this propeller. That's a pretty significant amount, and that's why I say this might need to be statically balanced first. If it was 0.5 ips, you can see it'd be calling for only about an ounce of weight or so, but this is over two ounces. The manual from Dynavibe gives you some handy weights that you can see to have a rough idea if you're adding a number three washer or a number 10 washer or a 10 light washer, how much weight are you actually adding? We'll go ahead and temporarily add some weight. I need a bit here, and I'm not actually gonna put 50 grams of weight on this propeller to start with. What I'll do is I'll add about 10 grams. So I'm just gonna grab this big nylock nut here, a longer screw, and put that into the side of the spinner to see if I can make at least some progress getting our out of balance condition slightly closer to the center. Keep in mind that if you have just a seriously rough running engine, this probably will not fix it. This is more for an out of balance engine and out of balance propeller, not something that's misfiring or just running terribly because you have a bad plug, bad mag, bad intake leak, etc. We'll go ahead and run our test again. We got the airplane up to about 2270 RPM static. That's full power. And again, it should be a little higher than that, but hey, negative 2000 foot density altitude. That's some thick air the propeller is trying to push. It's not going to be quite as high as we would like. You can expect higher static RPM. Actually, when you have warmer days in the summer, cooler days in the winter, you'll have a lower static RPM. But we can see we did make an improvement here. We are now down to 0 0.9 ips at 262 degrees. So essentially, very similar station still saying, hey, you need to be adding more weight at that 90 degree mark on the other side. We need to add a significant amount of weight here. So we will continue to do so and continue running this, continue filling out our sheet here until we can get the propeller as balanced as possible. Again, when starting this high up in the red range, it's a good idea to possibly have that propeller statically balanced, then mounted back to the airplane before you just go ahead and start chasing your tail on this. It's also important to mention that any weight you add to the spinner in the form of longer screws, shorter screws, playing around with stuff, you can also remove weight if there already is weight on there. So adding weight or removing it from the opposite station, of course, is the same thing. But really something to think about, indexing your spinner, essentially putting a little black mark on it on the backing plate and on the spinner itself so that when you do remove it for the 100 hours and annuals, that it's actually going back on the correct direction. So it's trying to keep the propeller as balanced as possible. You don't want to just be spending three or four or $500 balancing your propeller every annual. If you do it once, it should last quite a few hundred hours or at least a few years, but doesn't really do you a lot of good if you are moving weight around, if you have different length screws, if you lose a screw and then put a different size, different length screw that weighs slightly different, it's going to knock it into an out of balance condition, of course. Overall, this is a pretty simple process. You can expect to actually get some pretty good improvement out of your aircraft. It's not gonna necessarily climb faster or go faster or do any of that good stuff, but it really can help with engine longevity, propeller longevity, and really prevent fatigue cracks or possibly catastrophic cracks like the tip of your propeller falling off, which could be pretty, pretty bad. You know, so if you own an airplane, if you have an airplane in a club, it's really worthwhile looking into this. If you have an EA chapter, it's worth looking into buying one of these to have on hand for everyone to use. And if you do decide to go ahead and do this yourself on a home built or with the help of an A&P on a certified aircraft, definitely read the manual. There's lots of good stuff in there. One of the tips they have in there is actually something I do on every pre-buy I ever do 
before you even attempt to balance a propeller or attempt to buy an airplane, I'll always go ahead and bring a stack of old phone books with me, set them underneath the propeller, and check the actual track of the propeller blades. So you'll actually see one blade come down, mark off where it passes over the phone books or your mark or your stool or whatever it is you put there and then bring the other blade through and it should pass pretty darn close within an eighth of an inch or so if it's off by more than an eighth of an inch three sixteenths or a quarter inch that starts to be fairly concerning about not just the propeller being bent but also what kind of vibrations it's going to be sending through the airframe even if it feels like it runs smooth it's probably not doing your engine your propeller and your whole airframe any favors at all if you have a ground adjustable propeller or you have a constant speed propeller when you do this test to check the blade track it's also a really good idea to go ahead and check blade pitch at that same time if you have one blade that's taking a slightly bigger bite of air than the other it's going to dynamically cause some nasty vibrations going through your engine and airframe. If you guys have any questions on this, the folks at RPX that make the Dynavibe are super helpful. You can go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Thank you to RPX for sponsoring this video with the Dynavibe so we can get our airplanes here at the Flight Mike Alpha Pilot Lodge running a little bit smoother, a little bit less vibration, and increase their longevity. I've got plenty of maintenance to do, don't need to be doing any extra, so it's nice to be able to do this and prevent some maintenance down the road on the engines and airframes. We are staying busy here now working on the control tower. We've got two airplane houses done. We are in the middle of working on the control tower. Here are some renderings of what that thing is going to look like when it is all done with a gigantic glass geodesic dome at the top of it. Beautiful views of the mountains and northern lights. Super excited for it. We're going to get back to work out there in the cold. If you guys cannot fly every day, then fly 8mikealpha.com and we will see you all in the next one.